Josh obviously was pretty great on design runs last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a pretty good weapon. Do you uh, have in your mind, uh, is there a limit there? Do you, uh, do you um, want to be more selective than last year on that? What is your attitude? About I think it's going to be like all of the other game planning that we do. It's going to be based off of a decision we make that week on, on kind of how, what the, what we need in order to, to help us win a football game. So I think that's going to be the biggest determining factor for, for us is uh, obviously just kind of that, that mindset and, and that philosophy and then making sure uh, we're putting ourselves and, and, uh, and Josh in the best position to have success for our team. He's also was a, you know, I mean, you might argue he was your best short yardage runner last year. Do you have, do you feel confident that you have other options besides him that are good in short yardage? Yeah, I do. I, I do. I think we've got, uh, um, we've got a really good group of running backs back there that I think we feel comfortable handing the ball to any of them. Um, and then I think the, um, uh, the ability of our guys up front to, to hopefully get some movement up front. Uh, and create lanes for those guys is, is going to be key. And um, you know, I think uh, uh, having having a entire arsenal at your disposal, whether it's a running back, Josh, uh, you know, whatever it may be, um, run pass, whatever it may be, you know, is is important on you know whether it's short yards, goal line, normal situations, field, red zone, whatever it may be. Continuing with that, <laughs> you you know the running backs, all three of them, Devin, Moss, Cook. Mm -hmm. All looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. pretty, what, you know, what do you think of how they've looked? And do you have a challenge, like splitting up those reps? Uh, yeah, how mean, is that going to work? No, <laughs> it's definitely a challenge. I mean, it's a good problem to have when you when you've got guys who have performed like they have. It's obviously those three guys you mentioned, but but really that entire room. You know, when you when you talk about. Uh, you know, uh, Duke Johnson and Blackshear and, and all those guys. So, I mean, they, they've all done a great job, and it's been a really good competition between that, that entire room for um, playing time, roster spots, whatever it may be. So uh, I'm excited about it, and I feel very comfortable with whoever's in the game to really operate what we need. And um, the good part about all those guys is, you know, you're not hamstringed into just doing one thing. Hey, you, they can only run outside. They can only run inside. All those guys can do a, a multitude of different things. And lastly, Cooks, let's, let's pick up. How do you think, as a rookie, obviously, that's always a mm -hmm. learning curve. Uh, yeah. You know, how do you? Done a nice job. He's done a nice job. He's really kind of uh, come in and, and done a great job learning the system, learning our offense, um, you know, learning the ins and outs of it, uh, whether it's the run game, protection game, pass game, and, uh, and gone out and executed and at a high level and uh, excited about the direction he's going. Got here. And we're talking to you about getting with Aaron and Joe and talking about you know kind of syncing up, mm -hmm. right? And you know you've seen in the, in the summer here a lot of your tackles in the offensive line going in place of guard. Where's Dilly's always been important to you? How has that kind of played itself out, and what are the results so far of, of all the tinkering that you guys have kind of done? Yeah, and I think uh, a lot of that tinker has just been out of necessity through you know guys getting nicked up and and those types of things. So um, it's been it's been really beneficial for our depth and those guys development because because a lot of those guys were able to work against um, in, in that first group and and against you know one defense alignment and and that uh, and those guys so that's really kind of helped their development to create a, a really good um, I would feel like depth for us uh, through that experience so uh, that that's been important but also I think at the same time creating continuity of, of the guys up front and getting all those guys back so that they could play together, get a feel for each other, um, so we could really get rolling once the season rolls around is is important too. Coach, have you reached a final decision on your game day location? We had asked Coach yesterday, and he kind of punted to you and said, whatever you're comfortable with. No, yeah, obviously I've been up in the box the first two games, and we're going to look at it this week, and um, you know probably probably have a final decision on it. You know. Uh, Hopefully this week, and if not after this game, so I, I feel comfortable with wherever wherever that decision is. I just want to make sure, you know, um, one, I feel I'm in a good spot to be able to call a game, and two, uh, my communication with Josh and the rest of the guys is is uh, is clean. So that's been that's been the important part about working in the box and working out of the box, you know. Uh, um, the past few games because I've been down the field. I know what that's going to be like. So um, we'll see kind of uh, um, 
you know, if, if this game changes anything. Um, but uh, right now, I feel comfortable with, with whichever one it's going to be. Josh said that there's a, Sean McDermott gave a heavy fine for any coaches that get a penalty this season. And he says it's probably a good thing to keep you in the box. Has he had any say in that? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not. Uh, uh, I'd like to think I'm not too much of a psychopath. Like I feel like I'm I'm being made out to be something, but no. I mean, look. I mean, it's a it's a passionate game, and I think uh, um, you know. I mean, it's it's ball. It's football. You know what I mean? So I, I, I again, it's just going to be one of those things. I want to do what's best for the team and and what's best for uh, for me calling it. But uh, uh, it probably wouldn't hurt to be up in the box in that regard. Did you did you feel any different after doing it once and then? You know, in the first game, the preseason game, maybe more comfortable than what you thought it might have been, like what the perception would have been, and then getting to the second week, did that help you a little bit, basically? Well, I think the thing that helped a lot is, like, that first game, it wasn't, you know, uh, it wasn't perfect. We, we had the turnovers. We weren't quite getting in a rhythm ne necessarily throughout the game. Um, so just kind of battling through that from the box, you know, and having that feeling there, and then obviously last week having a little bit more success and being able to move the ball, and then having that feeling up there, you know, it, it was it was really good for me to kind of simulate those two different things, and then some of the different scenarios, whether it was a, a two minute drill or a backed up situation, whatever it might be, um, those different scenarios that popped up where you kind of got to handle them from the box as a play caller and and uh, um, that communication, I think was 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 really good for me to be honest with you. So got a got a much better feel for how that. That would be just kind of, hey, you know, how to get us back in a rhythm, how to kind of um, uh, get us back rolling and, and uh, feeling comfortable again offensively to, to convert first downs and, and drive and score points um, when things aren't going great and then when things are going well. So that, that was a good experience for me to be up in the box and experience that. We know Reggie Gilliam's versatility. We know he started at tight end, now back in the fullback position. But how comfortable would you be using him more in those tight end situations and, and lining him up that way? if necessary, or, or do you really want to keep him back in, in the fullback position? Yeah, I mean, obviously things can, can change throughout the year. Right now I feel really good with where he's at as a fullback, and we want to maximize him there as much as we can. Um, you know, obviously, you know, things are things are kind of dictated throughout the year as, as, as we go. Of um, Like we've talked about kind of in the past, as, as you kind of evolve as an offense throughout the year, you know, things might change in terms of some of those personnel pieces. But as of right now, you know, very comfortable with where Reggie's at. And I just want to make sure he's comfortable, uh, you know, in that role before, you know, we even think about trying to trying to do other things. All coaches are influenced by their past, who they've been coached by, things like that. When you step into this position, how far back do you reach into your archives? Or is there a cutoff point because the game has changed? So I guess what I'm asking is, like, do you go all the way back to things you learned from Coach Davis, Coach Coker, or is it just like, man, the game's changed so much. I don't know how much of that stuff applies. There's never a cutoff point. No. I mean, if there's a if there's something that helps you score touchdowns, I'm all in. You know, it could have been when I was, you know, playing in high school. You know, I had a pretty darn good high school football coach. So, I mean, there, there could be things on that. You know what I mean? But it's just – uh, and the way football is, it's such a it's a such a cyclical deal. You know, what I mean, you see things just then were were a trend ten years ago, all of a sudden coming back. You know, what I mean, so um, uh, really, we take the mindset of, hey, if it helps us win a football game, we're going to explore it and be all in. And if it helps us win, then hey, we'll 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 put it in. And just as long as it, again, it fits our identity, it fits our DNA, and that's the important thing. It's not, you know trying to reinvent the wheel and reinvent who you are. It's trying to find ways to expand who you are within your identity. So in the next week, what it looks like with you being involved in the discussions about personnel. Mm -hmm. I know Brandon makes the ultimate call in front office, but you may have a say in what you want to do and how many tight ends you keep, for example, mm -hmm. or something like that. Like, what does that look like from your perspective in those meetings? Those are constant discussions, you know, and, and I'm, I'm in a fortunate position because I'm, I'm with a group uh, with Brandon and, you know, Sean that I have an incredible amount of trust and faith in. Um, and I think those conversations have been ongoing th since day one, since, you know, I was first able to get this job, you know. Uh, and, and so I think they, they've got a good feel for who we are offensively and, and what we're looking for in, in our players and what we expect out of them. And so I feel extremely comfortable with that, whatever decision they, they decide to make. And 
um, I think that's a constant communication and, and it takes a lot of faith and, and trust in, in those guys, um, you know, uh, uh, for us as, as offensive coaches because we just we got trust that that they're giving us the tools to go in the direction that we feel like we need to go in and and I have that faith and trust in those guys. Um I think it's just honestly it's the just the way it just panned out uh the way the game was called in that first drive. Um we had guys, you know, we were trying to mix and match guys and give them opportunities in different personnel groupings. So just based off of that one drive or however six plays or whatever Josh was in, the personnel groupings that were called weren't OJs, you know? So um it's it's no fault of of OJs, it's just the way the game was honestly called. And um, you know, my biggest goal was to make sure Josh felt comfortable and get get him in a rhythm um, first and foremost. And, and so that that's really the reason more so than anything else. I think OJ has been doing a heck of a job, and you know, those three guys are all working their tail off and really put them in a position to make you know it, uh, it, things very tough on on the decision makers here. Well, I think just uh, one is his intelligence. I mean, he's an extremely smart individual who's got great football IQ and uh, and savvy for the game. So I think that's the main thing. You know, uh, we, we really look for guys who are smart, tough, and dependable football players. So I think he fits those things. And when, when they do, it's a lot easier for them to kind of get plugged in and adapt to what you're doing. And, and he's a great example of that. There's a lot of strong personalities in that receiver room. Is he starting to show? I'd say it's a little bit of both. <laughs> you know, I think uh, um, uh, he's not going to be the, the boisterous one in the room, but uh, he's not going to be afraid to give it back to those guys a little bit, which is good. You know, I think it's a, it's a good mix. And, um, you know, it's like I said, I think I said it last week. That's a, you know, if I ever need just a, a laugh, I'll go into that room. I mean, they're, they're awesome. I, I love those guys. And, um, you know, they, they work so hard and, and, um, and just are, have such a great feel for the game and, and see things so well. It's, it's always fun to kind of go in there and, and just listen, listen to those guys talk and, and they're back and forth. For James, he had a couple quick, you know, runs you know, mm -hmm. over the weekend, but with, you know, Devin and Zach there, how do you game plan to, to get James, you know, those opportunities in the regular season? Yeah, I mean, honestly, to be on, perfectly honest with you right now, haven't gotten to that step yet. You know, I mean, right now we're just – we're so still in training camp mode, um, so we're still in the hey, what what are what are the different concepts we still need to work on to build reps on to get to, you know, where we feel comfortable in the season, you know what I mean? So so honestly, like I, I haven't gotten there in my head a hundred percent yet, uh, but obviously there's there's things we like that we do with him, and um, you know whether it's a, a run or pass game, so. Uh, he's done a great job adapting and learning and putting himself in a position to help us on offense. And, and then as the season gets, gets along and gets going, uh, that's, that's a conversation for every position group, whether it's running backs, receivers, tight ends. We're always going to try to mix and match and, one, to, to keep our tendencies balanced, and, two, put guys in the best position where we feel like they could have success. Sweeney's a guy that seems to have flashed at training camp. You've seen him as a young player battling through the myocarditis. What has it been like? to see his progress back from that and his performance so far? I think it's a, a real testament to Tommy how much he's worked. And, and everything that we've kind of challenged him with um, coming into this uh, off season and uh, mini camps and OTAs and training camps and everything, he's really responded to and, and really, you know, uh, um, taken that next step to, to, you know, continue to grow as a player. So I think he's done a, a tremendous job in terms of that, in terms of his growth and, uh, and, and his desire to get better and, and really excited with, uh, with the strides he has made. I mean, it, it's really substantial, uh, both in the run and pass game, protection, run blocking, everything. I think he's really made some great strides for us. He wants to try to uh, keep you from getting five guys in the pattern, you know, like blitzing or fire zones like Pittsburgh maybe did sometimes last year. Do you think James' speed is a deterrent that can be a deterrent to that? Uh, uh, I think it can leak out. You uh, know, yeah, I think it can be a combination of a lot of things. I think it could be a combination of what you decide to do to attack that. I think it would be a combination of your personnel. You know, obviously when you've got um, personnel who – 
could win one-on-one -on -one matchups or find holes in zones or, uh, you know, understand, hey, if, uh, if they're, they need to adjust a route or anything like that, then, then that helps you against teams that want to pressure or, or do different things. So um, I think all those, all those different factors can play a, play a role in that. It's kind of a guy like Tommy who, uh, you know, he had an initial hype after he got drafted, dealt with some injuries. How have you seen him kind of regain his confidence and make some big strides this year? I'm sorry, Isaiah Hodgins, your time? Okay, yeah. Um, he's, again, he's another guy who's really, you know, uh, stepped his game up, I feel like. And uh, it was, it's been fun watching him in the preseason games, you know, and, and making some plays and doing the things he, he's been doing in the preseason games. Um, just because that, that verifies kind of what you see on the field. So, again, it's, uh, it's a good problem to have when, um, as, a, as a coaching staff when you have this many guys who are making personnel decisions difficult on you. Um, and that's a testament to those guys and how hard they worked. And Isaiah is one of them. He's really made great strides year after year and kind of uh, um, developed that toughness and, and that, uh, that ability to um, run routes, create separation, get open, um, because he's always been a, a very good route runner and, and had great size, and, and he's just continued to, to learn how to utilize those things for himself. This will be the first time dealing with a cut down day as no cut. As a coordinator, mm -hmm. are you lobbying Brandon already, buying him dinner or something like that to see if he can be on the good end of you know, some of the cuts? Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's a good end on cuts. Um, as a as a player who's been on that end, it's it's something that you know I don't take lightly. Um, you know, as as a guy who got let go and and you know that was it. You know, it's something that that I'm never going to take lightly or take for granted when it comes to these guys. So um, you know, there there's tough decisions to make, which is which is good because that means that uh, Brandon, those guys have really uh, uh, given us a group of guys that you know, all deserve the, the consideration. So, I mean, that's, that's the good part about it. And, again, I think it goes back to just when, when you're talking about just, um, you know, who's going to be here and, and, unfortunately, who's not, um, the faith I have in those guys. Like, if, if you told me, hey, it's for nine times out of ten on the roster, it's this guy or this guy, I'm like, well, you can make a great argument for either one. So um, that's, that's the hard part, more so than anything. You know? So again, I think the, the trust I have in those guys is at an extremely high level, and, and I got a lot of faith in whatever direction they decide to go on a lot of these decisions. And what have you seen from Quentin Moore so far mm -hmm. this summer, especially to get him to the point where he's getting some, some reps with Josh? Like, yeah, again, Q's been uh, um, just steadily kind of getting better since day one, since he got here. And just the reps within the system for, you know, a, uh, um, he might have gotten this play before, but it was against this look, and now it's against this look. So he's constantly learning new, you know, new things and, and uh, learning the adjustments and uh, some, of those, some of those types of things, whether it's run or pass. So um, obviously he's got physical ability and, and he's able to do a lot of different things. But uh, uh, I think just that, that, that learning of, you know what happens on this play against some of these, all these different looks, is really kind of where he's continuing to improve and get better, and, and that's that's the exciting part about him. How important is this last preseason game? Just being able to get another look at these young guys or the players that are battling for a roster spot. I think it's huge. I mean, uh, it's one, it's huge for us, and two, it's huge for those guys. You know, because whether or not it's here or somewhere else. Um, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for these guys to go out and compete, you know. And, again, it kind of goes back to, you know, I mean, I, I take the mindset where um, I don't overlook these games as a coordinator. Um, I want to give these guys and try to put these guys in, in, in the best situation possible because I've been in those situations before playing in the, you know, fourth quarter of the fourth preseason game, you know. So um, that means a little something to me, too, to, to make sure these guys have every opportunity, one, to show us, but to, two, to show, you know, the, the league, their families, and, and everybody else who's watching what they're able to do. That's probably a dumb question, but when Reggie Gilliam's in the game, do you always call it 21 personnel? Uh, I mean, again, that's uh, it varies. So I mean, uh, he's our he's our he's our full he's our, our fullback. I'm not really going to get into the details of of that stuff. Thanks, guys.